So if we could uh, all take a look at page six of our town report, we will start to go through the warnings. And I am here to work with Michael to answer any questions that we have as we go through these warnings. So I'll just read this. The legal voters of the town of Woodbury, Vermont, hereby warn and notify to cast ballots by mail or hand delivery, or come to the Woodbury Town Hall on Tuesday, March the 1st, 2022, between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. to vote by Australian ballot on the following articles. Article 1, to elect all town officers required by law, moderate, for one year. And I'll pause for any on, questions. There is a name on the ballot for Steve Murphy, but I don't, he couldn't be here. Okay. So Stephen Murphy has put his name on the ballot. And as you all know, there are write in candidates available for each one of these positions. <laughs> Town Clerk for a three year position. <coughs> Select board member. One position with a year remaining on a three year term. And, excuse me? She told me to raise my hand, but I've already made my name known. You made yourself known. Yeah. And a second position for select board with a three year term. My name's on the ballot for that one. So, you probably mentioned so his names are on the ballot. Yeah. So, can you tell us your name and, and um, we could 
maybe put in front porch form or something that you're interested as a write-in. It would have to be a write-in candidate. And um, the other possibility is that the new select board could appoint you as a library trustee. Or maybe the trustees could do that or suggest to the select board. Yeah, even the trustees suggest somebody to be appointed. So we'll go out to one of those. So, um, Sarah, what do you think would be the best option for, um, can you just tell us your name? Atmo, A-T-M-O, Nathan. Well, we, uh, you know, um, it'd be great, you know, we've got Terry here, and then there's uh, two of us staying on the board, and there's um, one more person that owns property in Woodbury and is in the process of moving, that hasn't moved yet, so she can't be on the ballot. But, we are going to suggest to the select board that she be appointed. And then we have one more vacancy. We, we did post a front porch forum and all this, and hopefully we'll get it out there on Facebook and the <laughs> website. See if we can get a fifth person. I would suggest just getting in touch with the library trustees and, and let them know that you're interested and they can present your name to the select board. Not, um, it could be after Tuesday. It could be after Tuesday. I mean, we, we could post something on Front Porch Forum also, um, or you could, saying that you would like to be a write-in candidate for a library trustee. And I guess you should probably designate which, whether you would want the three or the two-year terms. Um, yeah, I think the more publicity gets better. And then people who see that posting would know to write in. I don't remember. I think it's, yeah, something like that. I have eight in my memory. It's a minimum of seven mm -hmm. to so, actually produce a write-up. Um, so for library, library trustees is a minimum of five trustees. No, I'm talking about the uh, number of write-in votes. Write-in votes. To be okay. Elected or eligible. Sorry, it's a little tough to hear everything. So that would be my suggestion. You know, if, if you want to try to, to be a write-in candidate for, you know, a lot of some people have probably already voted. Um, but if you um, you can post something on front porch forum saying that you're interested in the three or the two-year term as a library trustee, and people who vote um, after today or on, on meeting day. If they see that posting and want to write your name in, they will. Um, that would be one way to try and hear Michael very well. Okay. Uh, you can't hear him well enough to understand him.
So for Article 2, shall the town appropriate a total of $10,294 to the following Central Vermont Area Service Agencies? $750 to AWARE, Aid to Women, Men, and Children in Abuse and Rape Emergencies. $250 to the American Red Cross of Northern New England. $600 to Central Vermont Adult Basic Education. $750 to the Central Vermont Council on Aging. $2,000 to Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice Incorporated. $650 to Circle, formerly Battered Women's Services. $100 to the Family Center of Washington County. $484 to Green Mountain Transit. $50 to Green Up Vermont. $750 to Hardwick Community Television. $200 to Mosaic, formerly the Sexual Assault Crisis Team. $200 to our House of Central Vermont. $100 to the People's Health and Wellness Clinic, $500 to Rural Community Transportation, $200 to Salvation Farms, gathers fresh vegetables from Vermont Farms, donate to food pantries, $1,000 to the Twin Valley Senior Center, $210 to the Vermont Center for Independent Living, $1,000 to Washington County Mental Health Services, and $500 to the Washington County Youth Service Bureau. Questions or comments on any of those allocations? Appropriations, excuse me. That's just a single vote. Right. That's a single vote. Without any comments or questions, we'll move on to Article 3. Shall the town have its taxes paid to the town treasurer as tax receiver 60 days after tax bills are mailed? Estimated due date to be October 27, 2022. Taxes would then come delinquent and be turned over to the collector of delinquent taxes for collection with a penalty that increases by one half percent per month of delinquency to a maximum of 6% for one full year or more of delinquency and interest of 6% per year or one half percent per month. That is the entirety of Article 3, which would again be one vote. Question, how, how, how did we do last year in terms of delinquency? Uh, I wish Brady was here to address that question. Um, but uh, I, you know, I think Ron has been doing a great job of collecting right. delinquent taxes. Um, it's definitely um, pretty consistently um, that he is able to, to collect a significant amount. Um, I can't give you exact figures. I don't have them. They might be in the town report somewhere. There are some decent figures in the report. They're not perfectly up to date. And there was only, in spite of COVID, there are, the numbers I saw showed only a 15% increase in the delinquency. Was everyone able to hear that comment? No. I find what page it's on. 29. And uh, on page. Somebody said 29. It is page 29. Page 29 shows a delinquent tax balance July 1, 2020, and it shows it June 30, 2021. Went from about 78,000 up to 90. There was a 15% increase, which 
seems amazing, considering what's been going on in my life. And uh, also, it's interesting that that's uh, without that onerous 8% penalty that used to be charged if somebody was even a day late. And uh, many towns in the uh, state have kept that 8%. And there have been some big windfalls for some tax collectors. Big. Other questions or comments about Article 3? Did that answer your question, Peter? Oh, yes. Thank you. Moving to Article 4 on page 8. Shall the town appropriate $17,850 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department? to be added to the truck replacement fund paid July 1, 2022. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I, think Chance, I think Chance is here. Chance, do you have anything that you want to add to that statement or, or, or to Article 5, which we can address next? Uh, there's really nothing to add. That's the same language that we do every year. We're just defining when it's going to be paid. Any questions at all on that? How article? much do you have in that truck replacement fund as of today? Uh, that question gets asked every year, and we have zero dollars in that because that goes directly to pay the loans every year. Thank you. Thank you, Chance. Without other comments or questions, we'll move to Article 5. Shall the town appropriate $78,487.76 to fund the operations of the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2022? Remotely, for, you know, chance would probably be the one to answer them, of course. Yes, Ken. I've, I've got a little problem with this question about this thing. I'm Chance, were you able to hear that? Uh, it was broken up. I caught part of it, but I didn't catch the whole question. I think essentially the question is, does the fire department as a separate corporation have additional funds that are not visible to the town? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. We're a non-profit organization, so if you're asking if we make a profit off the town, we do not. Uh, we have the capital replacement fund, which is uh, being put in by the towns each year, which we'll be adding to every year. Uh, short of that, our operation funds are our operation funds. We don't make a profit off the town. Ken, I think if you turn to page 46, there seems to be a breakdown of Ken, can you repeat it? Sorry, sir. Can you say it again? Yeah. So, page 46. On page 8, out of the 6, 
Right, but if you look at page 46, 46. it has the full budget breakdown. Full budget, but it doesn't show how much money they have on hand. Got it. Like, what do they have in accounts, savings, etc.? I guess as a nonprofit, is that probably publicly accessible, but I think that's the question. Okay. That's the question, yeah. There's, there's how much have we got? So, so Chance, the question I think is, how much money on hand does the fire department actually have? Uh, for operations, uh, by July, uh, June 30th, we're almost completely out of money every year. Money on hand would be uh, the 17850 that we asked for the truck place to fund. That is the cost of the two loans. So at the end of the year, that money zeroes out. The 31,000 that we're trying to establish the, uh, or continue, I should say, we have our, we've already established the capital replacement fund. That money will be added up so that we can purchase without having to lease and, and uh, borrow trucks down in the future. That we are at about 61,000 right now, uh, based on money that we paid out uh, for E1. Uh, we also have 20, about 24,000 that is the truck uh, maintenance reserve. That's been at 20 to 25,000 for uh, at least as long as I've been a member of the department. And that is for, you know, if the engine rolls up tomorrow, we have to pay for it. We don't have to wait till town meeting to put a fire truck back in service. Uh, and as you can see, we didn't ask for any money to be put in the maintenance reserve fund this year because we haven't used any this year, so there's no need to replenish that fund. Other than that, we have uh, about $30,000 that we've raised towards the cost of a new building uh, through separate fundraising, and that's the extent of our money. I have a question on that. Uh on that point of the new building, that was a that was a, a big discussion last year and was voted down. I'm just curious if there's any brief update on that prog progress, or maybe that's the maybe that's the report that there's kind of independent private fundraising going on. But is that still a goal to have an, a, a new facility built and any new plans? Yep, we uh, we still plan on having a new building built. We're still going to be asking. We'll come back yearly and keep asking. Uh, in the meantime, we're doing private fundraising to try to amass as much of that money as we possibly can uh, to alleviate the uh, burden on the taxpayers, you know, which we're all taxpayers too, so we'd like to alleviate that burden some. Uh, the opinion of probable cost that was uh, redone by Steve Pitkin uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, instead of 1.2 million, the building would now cost about 1.3 million, which I assume by next year it'll just go up another hundred thousand based, based on whatever building materials cost, of course, uh, I can't put it back, but yeah, so we're looking at about 1.3 million right now, and like I said, we're just going to continue to keep fundraising, and hopefully the town will approve it. Moving forward. So, uh, Chant, can you mention a special town meeting that was petitioned for um, the fire station, the new fire station? Yeah, we're, we have put out a petition to uh, have that voted on again. It will be April 23rd. Uh, I believe uh, it's at 10 o'clock at the school. So we will be voting on that again this year at the 1.3 million. And that's an in-person meeting. I'm sorry, what was that? That's an in-person meeting? Yeah, yes, sir. It, it'll be just like this. We'll like this, and, uh, and we'll have the remote. And we'll have remote access as well. But they won't be able to vote that way. Actually, no. We can't have remote access at a special town meeting or a town meeting. So That's right. It will be totally in person. It'll be in person only. Thank you, Robin. Yep. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I, I have a question. Is Callis sharing in the cost for the new fire department? Chance, did you hear that? I heard something about Callus and the fire truck, but that's a no. Is, is, Cal, is Callus sharing in the cost of the new facility? No, we, we are not charging Callus for the new facility other than the operational costs. 
Why not? Because we can't take the building to Dallas like we do fire trucks. Was that the same arrangement when they built the uh, East Montpelier fire uh, new, new building there? I thought the, uh, communities outside of East Montpelier were shared in that cost. East Montpelier and Dallas did win on that together, and um, it's, it's been tenuous at best. What do you mean, tenuous? That's our only comment on somebody else's buildings. Are you going to maintain the new fire department better than you have the current one that the sign is coming off and you back into? Uh, okay, I'm not part of the question. So, yes, yeah, so that was a question of current maintenance of the existing facility. Uh, is there, with a new facility, would there be a plan for regular maintenance? to keep that facility intact. We, we, have, we currently have a maintenance grind in the budget for our station maintenance. So we will continue to maintain the stations as much as we can. Yes. Chance, would you explain, um, we have a new fire truck and because we have a reserve fund, um, how that was able to be purchased and the savings when we bought it was substantial? Well, this, this one, we, if you're talking about new one, this one was actually, we still had to do a lease on this one because of the time frame, but we were able to do it in a 10 year versus a 20 year no, which that will increase obviously the savings on the interest. But the last truck we bought, which will be paying off in 2025, when we figured it out, we spent almost as much in interest on the truck as we did on the truck itself. It was $290,000 for the truck, and I believe the interest we figured out was $264,000. That was the reason, part of the reason, for trying to create a capital replacement fund so that we could actually buy the trucks outright versus having to spend all this money on interest. Did that, did that answer your question? Yes. I just wanted, um, we have a great truck and we got a great price on it. And um, I thought the town should understand um, really what a deal we got. Well, we did. Uh, the, truck, the truck was actually a $400,000 truck, but it was a demo. And when we purchased the new engine, we purchased it at $245,000 versus the $400,000 because it was a demo. It had uh, less, than, uh, less than 100 miles on it. It was a demo for propane trucks. And once we agreed to purchase it, they took the propane engine for us out of it, put a diesel engine in, and uh, transitioned the truck over. And we bought it for $245,000 versus the $400,000. I think Diana had a so question. Just with regard to Cam's question, the fire department does have its own internal auditor, right, Jane? Yes. Is that you? No. So you were the assistant. Assistant okay. auditor? Treasurer. Treasurer, okay. No. So they do they do have an auditor on their roster, right? Somebody the, the screening committee does the auditing of all the books, and that is a of three people. Okay. The record keeping is very good. <laughs> I have one other question. Uh, Chance, when you come before, when we have a meeting in April in regards to the new, new firehouse, will that include uh, how that will affect our tax rates? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, we, we try to estimate based on what the tax rate would look like. Uh, the last time we went through this last year, it looked like it was going to raise, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank, I don't have the numbers in front of me, my apologies from last year. Uh, I wasn't prepared to speak about the fire station today as it's not on the ballot, but um, 
I, I want to say it was going to cost me my property was valued at just under 150,000, and it was going to be 120 dollars over a year based on my taxes and my tax rate from last year. We'll have to figure it out again this year. Are there additional questions about Article 6? Ken, uh, uh, nope. I'm sorry, Ken? Yeah. Well, I'm on the side about what you on again. The ones who don't know me, when Ken came, and I started the original fire department here in 1965, mm -hmm. and every year, the town report carried the amount of money that we spent for what, and it was listed right out what had been spent, what had come in, all those expenses. And basically, we was operating on on change in them days in second-hand trucks, and I can see them going up. But there's no accountability here. Who makes a contract with Calus? Is that a legal contract, or is that something the fire department can make them with themselves? How much is Northern Pay contributing to what we are? You've got you've got some questions there that you've got an awful lot of money. And this is getting to be a hell of a poor town. Mm -hmm. I mean, we stuff with long-term payments on. Are you able to hear that, Dan? Yeah, not that long to pay it. Uh, no. Ken, uh, do you mind asking that again? We'll bring the mic right over here. Let's see, which one is ours? I just thought I grabbed the right one. So, uh, yeah, just say what you said again. I'll, I'll hold this up. Or you can hold it. Just speak with me. Yeah. You can take your mask off. Start at the beginning. You can take your mask off. Yeah. It's okay to take your mask off. I can't talk English anyway. I was talking about the whole fire department's financial background and our lack of knowledge of what it is. That's, I guess that's the roughness of it. I, I would like to know how much have we got to set aside for this new fire station. Nowhere can you find that figure. And yet they come back and ask for money. I can see them asking for the more money, but if, tell me how much you got already. And if you go into East Dallas and make out a, a contract for fire, who does that? Fire chiefs shouldn't be authorized, actually, to go back and forth and negotiate it. That's a private concern, and we can't audit their books. And their people should not be able to go to East Dallas and negotiate a contract between the towns. That's right. I'm just saying, to me, at Della Hand, there's no Nobody is responsible for some of this stuff. All we do is ask for money. That's all. I'll say it. Chance, do you want to respond to that? <laughs> I would like to see a representative of the fire department. President. Well, we do have one report from the president of the fire department, so. He hasn't responded. Are you here? I think we might have lost chance. No, I'm, I'm still here. Uh, the only, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the question is. Uh, as far as who makes the contract with Dallas, we do. Uh, the president and the fire chief negotiate the contract with Dallas. Uh, as far as the building and the money, it's the same amount of money. Uh, the only difference is, is they went up a little bit from 1.2 million to 1.3 million. That's going to cost the town uh, less than, a little less than $85,000 a year uh, for 20 years. Uh, and I already told you that we have $35,000 saved up towards the building, so that's the money that we have on hand for the building. I'm not sure if there was another question there that I'm not catching. 
I thought the question was, who has the authority to negotiate between these two towns? Well, we're not actually negotiating between towns. We're a private organization that is negotiating with each town. So who are you negotiating with in Calus? Uh, this year we're negotiating with the voters just like we are with Woodbury because they have moved out of the select board's budget the emergency services and put it on the floor to balance just like uh, Woodbury does. I, I didn't get that thought about Calus. Uh, what, what Chance said is that um, the people will in Calus will be voting on the, their part of the fire department budget um, the same as we will here in Woodbury. It'll be, and rather than negotiating with the select board and having it be a budget item, um, there'll be separate articles just like we have that people in Calus will vote on. So then what you're saying is that they vote on the select board that they, they have control over the fire department. No. No, they no. don't. They have to, the fire department has to present different articles for the town to vote on here in Woodbury, and they're doing the same in Callis. I mean, it is the select board that, and the town clerk um, who put together the warning, but the, these, these articles that the fire department uh, has on the Woodbury warning um, were submitted by the fire department. Yeah. Yeah. With, with, with no, I suppose with no uh, negotiations with whoever's here on the wood. Yeah, it doesn't get negotiated. No, that's up, that's up to the people in town. I, I know, but uh, when you're coming up with a budget that books, the select board has got a pretty big thumbprint. <laughs> no shake your head, no. Yet, so. <laughs> so the fire department says what they need, and the voters say. The, the voters decide. It's up to the voters, not the select board. The select board doesn't decide. Uh, I'm, look, I'll drop it. I'm just saying, on the other hand, that it needs it needs negotiation by people. This comes from the heart. Well, I, I think that's why the um, fire department asked for the special town meeting about the firehouse, so that there could be a chance for people to gather and negotiate rather than click off a box on the uh, Australian ballot. So, hey, uh, just, just for FYI, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure who's been asking the questions, but if Mike Gray or Chris Cotis could give uh, my contact information to the person, I'd be more than happy to sit down and try to answer any questions they have. It's Ken uh, Ken, Ken King is asking the questions, Chance. Oh, Ken, okay. Uh, yeah, if, if you would mind giving him my phone number, uh, Ken, you're more than welcome to call me and I can meet you at the station or I come to your house, however you'd like. Uh, try to break it down a little bit. Maybe in person it would be a little easier. I, uh, I apologize to everybody. Uh, my schedule is made up a, a month ahead of time. Uh, so I wasn't aware of this meeting, uh, and Paul is working for the state hazmat uh, this week, so we're, we're not able to be there, and I apologize. Chance said he'd be happy to sit down and come to your house or meet you at the station and go over whatever questions you have. Can I just comment that, that when the fire department first was proposing putting on putting uh, a new uh, building in South Woodbury, there was really very little discussion. It was just saying they were going to do it. And, um, um, there's been a history there that I think has to be reviewed and, 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 and uh, there should be more collaboration and open dialogue between the fire department and the town in regards to these projects. Um, 
I just hope it's better, better presented in the future. They're going to have a video, and one of the things they're going to show is we had that awful fire in um, Woodbury, and when they got home, they had frozen pipes, and so they had to have the trucks out of the fire station and to thaw the pipes, and it was really awful, and you have no idea. These are volunteers that come in, and if there is a fire, there's very little to get your equipment on. There's lots of reasons. Um, and unless you go in and look, um, and the amount of time, our grandson is a, a fire person, and unless you go, the amount of training that they go through and the amount of time they spend um, and in this cramped space, um, so they really should have gone down a bit because of the amount of training the fire department has improved. And as you have, your firefighters have more training, your insurance rates go down. I don't dispute that at all. I'm just talking about um, this, these new act, this new building and whatnot. Um, um, and I was a fire department, with, a, a fireman with, with Ken when I, we, it was sort of a, 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 a male ritual. To, we all kind of joined the fire department without, without committing to be a lifer, but we did participate. And it was, it was, uh, it was great because, you know, we learned and we all worked together and, uh, uh, and uh, it, it's a different, it's a different operation now, that's all. It's much more, uh, Insulated, or you know, uh, and uh, I just hope in, as as we look at a new building, we're really working together on this, right? And and I, that to me is really critical. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. We had, we had originally formed a committee to kind of look at the options in town, and then we move forward once we've got the opinion of probable cost. As Jane alluded, we are going to be releasing a video before the April 23rd meeting. And as we did last year, uh, we will still be offering, if people would like to come down to the station and talk in groups uh, and take walkthroughs and talk about the numbers, we're more than happy to do that. And we'll probably be setting up a Saturday or two uh, in April to do that for folks that would like to come down. Um, but last year, we had one person stop in and one person set up an appointment, and that was all the people that came in last year to have these discussions. The last proposal was was going to be a uh, designed by the by the uh, uh, contractors, uh, but we didn't know what was being designed. Or, uh, how is how is that being configured this year in terms of will there be a design and then a, a, a contractor will be selected thereafter? How, do you know? Or maybe we should just discuss this one. Well, I was going to say we should really discuss this. Uh, or, you know, the April 23rd meeting. However, all of this information is on our is on our Facebook page. It's on our website. We posted it all there last year. We put the plans there. We put the OPC there. All of this information was available last year as well. It's still there from last year. I would like to make one thing clear here in this composition. I am not. Glad to be one of them. But uh, that's a completely different thing than what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But chance, you you probably didn't get to hear that, but Ken spoke again, and, and he just uh, praised the fire department for the work that they do and, and their efficiency. Um, his issue is more with. Uh, um, 
disclosure of, of funds and you're just being a little bit more open in um, uh, so that townsfolk kind of know the financial situation of the fire department a little bit better. And this, is, this is actually uh, one for starters, Ken, thank you for the compliments. We all appreciate uh, the fact that people do see what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. It's truly appreciated. Um, the conversation that we've been having, and this would be an increase in cost to the taxpayers, is that uh, you know we could get a professional audit done so that people feel better about this. However, it's going to cost money. Um, and if that's the way the town would like to move forward, you know, next year I will uh, get uh, cost uh, estimates done to have a full audit done uh, by an independent audit group. But like I said, it does cost money. You're talking, you know, usually somewhere between five and ten grand uh, the first time out of the gate for a private audit like that. Um, but if that's what it takes to make people feel better. Uh, versus me telling you what the amounts are in the accounts, then I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, it's just, but it is going to cost more money. Thank you, Chance. You're welcome. If there are no further questions about Article 6, we should move on to Article 7, please. Shall the town appropriate $23,000 for an audit of the modified cash basis financial statements of the town for the year ending June 30th, 2022? And I think I would just say if Randy was here, she would uh, strongly advocate for the fact that we haven't had this type of audit in a very long time. And it would be very good for us to have. And I think she would also say, not to speak for Randy necessarily, that once we've done this initial audit, if we decide to do this on a more regular basis, the cost would decrease per annum. As auditors, we've asked for the audit uh, for the last 10 years. I, I would add that uh, when I was in Carroll's, the only administrator, uh, it was interesting, uh, the treasurer there told me that with the NEMREC system that they use there, which we use, they basically, the town uh, basically audits itself every month. And when it comes time for their end of the year audit, the auditors say, this is easy. They don't find anything. Goes right through facts. And uh, I don't know much more about it. If it costs more, if it makes more work, or, or what the details are, except that uh, NEMRIC does have that ability uh, to, for the town to make the uh, annual audit a lot simpler. Because things are caught as they, as they happen, instead of having to go back but it's time for a professional audit oh, this I don't year. Disagree. I don't disagree. Um, and yes, and Randy's been doing an incredible job, and it's so much easier. And she's been documenting, and when you look at the books, everything's laid out. It's really good. But um, we really do need a professional audit. And, and another part of an audit, it's not just uh, about checking the numbers. Um, with a professional audit, they can suggest to the town, um, and particularly to your Brandy, um, just other efficiencies in the bookkeeping um, that could be incorporated in, in the town. Um, so it, it's, audits are, you know, a professional audit um, is helpful in more ways than just uh, figuring out uh, that, that everything is, uh, adds up or doesn't. Um, And I think, you know, we, we tried to, I remember the select board a few years ago, we had um, put out an RFP and got some um, money back and we were set to have it on a uh, town warning and, and then there was some other expenditures that were um, kind of came at the last minute and uh, we just sort of dropped it. I think Skip was part of the select board then. Um, but there's, 
And I think no one really has a historical memory of when the town last had um, a professional audit. So I, I do think we're kind of due. Um, Any other questions or comments about Article 7? So we'll move on to Article 8. Shall the voters appropriate the amount of $13,000 to begin a multi-year program to improve the condition of the town's cemeteries by cleaning and repairing monuments, repairing fences, and landscaping? This amount is in addition to the $7,000 budgeted for mowing and general upkeep. I don't see anybody from the Cemetery Commission here. I can give you a little bit of background on this if you'd like. Um, what the uh, Cemetery Commission is looking to do is to have, um, a, I think this person, um, does similar work for Callis and a couple of other neighboring towns where they would basically um, uh, oversee the maintenance of, of all the town cemeteries, um, including the mowing in the future. Right now the town is, is in a three-year contract with the person that has been doing the mowing. But um, this would be basically hiring a person, a uh, local person who has made a business of um, you know, doing all of the, pretty much all of the paperwork stuff for a cemetery, um, all of the actual <coughs> maintenance, um, and he would definitely do a lot more upkeep to all of the cemeteries than uh, that's presently being done. Um, that's kind of what my, I mean, we talked about this at a few select board meetings. That's my memory of what this is all about. Um, so it would basically be just an increase in the amount of attention um, that uh, the town gives to the cemeteries and an increase in the upkeep. Um, but the $13,000 is just for the just for repair work, which wouldn't be... Uh, it would, it would have, in the future, it would be pretty much everything. All, all of the maintenance for the cemeteries. Um, you know, we've been talking about expanding the Westerbury Cemetery. This person would be able to do the, the permit work, um, any of the other kind of um, so-called legal paperwork associated with something like that. Um, um, and you know, I think that his what he asked for um, was twenty thousand dollars a year. So um, you know, this the thirteen thousand um, would be added to the uh, as mentioned here in the article to come up to twenty thousand. That's why the thirteen thousand dollar figure is there. So in the future, um, the Woodbury would probably be paying yearly. Uh, you know, this article line item would be twenty thousand dollars instead of the the thirteen and seven that we see here. Um, but the, the cemeteries would definitely be uh, get a lot more attention than they do right now. So just for clarification, in the past, I remember Richard Bratton was very active in trying to work on the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. So we're really uh, contracting with somebody to do that work, and the, and the yes. commissioners right. will not be responsible. We're essentially professionalizing this aspect. Yeah. Yeah, the commissioners are, There are five cemeteries. How many cemeteries are there in, in Woodbury? Uh, there Good are question. there are five that are established that are established. Yeah. There are three more that are unestablished. And then there are un, a significant number that are on private land that yeah. are not considered part of And that would be by evidence of stones, or is that? Uh, it's survey evidence. Cindy. Um, has he already gone around to see what kind of work is going to be doing? Yes. Yes. Is that what they're yes. doing? Yes. Yeah. question? So the question was whether or not the this person that the cemetery commission has identified has already reviewed the cemeteries that are in the town. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And yeah, yes, and the answer is yes. The Cemetery Commission um, worked with this person, and, um, and they, they have looked at all of the cemeteries. So with that money, with the 13000 um, that we would be Year, but then next year, um, and every year after that, would would he necessarily need that amount of money again, or is that just his fees? Or that's my again. I'm not 100% sure on this, but my understanding of this is that it, it, this would probably be $20,000 a year. Um, this person would be taking over the mowing part um, after this, uh, I think we have two more years on the three-year contract with the, that we've hired a, you know, a person to do the mowing, both for the cemeteries and the town properties. Um, so, and again, you know, I, I'm not on the cemetery commission. I know that this was discussed, um, but um, I think it would be around $20,000 a year. Skip, did you? I believe the scope of work is outlined on page 55. Uh -huh. okay. Just like to say that I think that's a huge increase in the amount of money that we spend. I don't know what the town's obligation really is for maintaining some of these really, really old stones, uh, cleaning them and so on, but if the people think that that's worth paying for, I guess they can decide. Go ahead, please. I realize there's nobody here from the Cemetery Commission, but do we have any idea what the multi and multi-year means? I mean, are we signing up for five years or 20 years? Uh, I mean, that, that sort of goes to the long-term budget for this. I mean, I certainly wouldn't oppose putting some money into improving the cemeteries, but, you know, if there's a, several years of work, it seems like they'd probably be in good shape. I'm not mm -hmm. so sure you would necessarily need to sign up for $20,000 a year to mow the lawn and make, you know, check the, I mean, I'm, I don't mean to diminish the work at all, but I think it's great. I, I think taking care of our cemeteries, and no offense, but we have more outgoing and incoming into the town right now. So uh, taking care of those spaces seems important. Um, and they're public, which is kind of beautiful to think about that. But just, I guess, the multi-year is the question. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that, Alex. I do know that the way it's worn here would just be for um, fiscal year 23. And what would happen right. the year after that? Um, because it would have to be worn every year. Got so we're not locking in for we're not, not, we're for we're not signing a contract year. for we're money. not signing a long term contract. Okay. But the, the goal helpful. of this as I understand it, and I'm sorry I can't speak for them directly, but the goal of this was to get ourselves in a position where we could do more regular maintenance. Uh -huh. But this would be the initial startup cost of something that would have to be warned every year, yeah. but would hypothetically be continuing. Yeah. But that this the, what the outline for the work, which is like over a thousand stone uh, headstones that would have to be attended to, uh, that's not going to be done in a year's time. Absolutely. No, no, this wouldn't. Yeah. Absolutely. The, uh, I guess the cemetery commission has met with one person who uh, might or might not be, be the only person who could do this kind of work. And I don't know if they have a plan for how they're going to pay that person. Just give that person $13,000 and see how much he can do. That just doesn't seem quite right, but uh, I guess the select board will probably still have some authority to pay the bills. I mean, sadly, Richard Patton used to take care of all this stuff and as a volunteer. And he resigned, and now that's, it got really expensive. Well, he couldn't keep up with it. He did. Well, I mean, there, I mean, there was, we did have to expend, I know, in South Woodbury, some money on this. Additional work and whatnot. But. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I, again, I don't know what the long-term plan is that the Cemetery Commission has um, with this person. I know that I think they did do due diligence in trying to find somebody like this, and um, mm -hmm. and uh, 
you know, th this person has kind of made it a niche business um, because uh, there isn't anyone doing it. Um, and he, he did come highly recommended um, to them. Um, and he does do work for other towns uh, in the surrounding area, um, including Callis, I believe, and, and maybe Cata. But again, that's my memory from discussions uh, uh, maybe six months ago um, about this. So, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty wide open room in the jurisdiction. Yeah, and it's too bad to hear something from the Senator Commission here. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of wishy was to Yeah, yeah I was just wondering if the uh, Senator Commission mm -hmm. falls under the purview of the town's purchasing policy, which says any expenditure over $8,000, you have to go out to bid and get at least three bids to the work. I think they did put out an RFP, but I, again, I'm, you know, I'm not on the Secretary Commission. I don't know what. I think that they did put out an RFP. Um, I, I, I think they only got one response. I agree with Michael. They did put out an RFP for this. Yeah. And the town has done that also before, you know, putting out an RFP. Uh, for a major expense, and you know, if you only get one response, and that's kind of what you have to go with. That was sort of true of uh, this uh, the aud auditor um, thing. Um, so, you know. could we request that the, the cemetery commission um, sort of just write down the work that was done each year? Uh, you could call somebody on the cemetery commission and request that, or you could come before the select board and request that, and um, um, I would think that would be a good thing to do. Again, just for accountability of the uh, more transparency is better. And I don't know if they don't really have a breakdown of their they don't have a breakdown expenses of not that we published in this time report. I know that the $7,000 they get pretty much every year, and that's been the same figure for quite a while, that basically pays for the mowing, um, and not much else. Other comments or questions about Article 8? I would uh, ask, we've got three planning commission members here. Right? Would it make sense for some of the, for the cemeteries to be historic preservation districts? I don't know the answer to that. No. Um, I do know we do have a couple of people who are on the town hall renovation committee who are their field has been historic preservation, and we could ask them um, what they know about cemeteries. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are. Any cemetery really is historic. <laughs> historic. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'll try to find out the answer to that. I know who I can ask. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Moving to Article 9. Shall the town appropriate $215,780 to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. Note, this amount does not include the amounts listed in Articles 2 and 4 through 8 above. Any questions Our at all general budget. Or comments? This is the general budget. General budget. Not the town highway budget. That's Article 10. That's Article 10. Yeah. See, that would be a, a what, 5.2% increase. Mm -hmm. That's about 5, yeah, it's just a little over 5%.
Robin, do you have any comments at all on the on the budget? No. No. Okay. All right. Not hearing other questions or comments. Let's look at Article 10, please. Shall the town appropriate six hundred and thirteen thousand six hundred fourteen dollars? to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for highway purposes for the period from July 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. I'm afraid that we do not have Chuck with us. No. Any questions at all? I think the question I had on that was, uh, I used to be in the uh, town equipment business, and uh, there's been talk about the freighter. It was last year. Right. Uh, that, that would be probably today, the town's to buy a freighter, you'd probably be looking around $400,000. Right. And uh, I think that it seems like that would impact plans unless it's already well, in the works. In yeah. I, I can speak to that a little bit because the select board has been discussing that for a few years now. Um, there was an opportunity to buy a used uh, grader from uh, East Montpelier, which got everybody excited for, for a while. Um, it would have been, you know, about half of what a new grader cost. Um, but, uh, you know, People felt that the old grader was still adequate. Um, it has gone through some major repairs um, in the last few years. The, the plan is, um, you know, we have this uh, um, highway equipment reserve fund, um, and it's similar to what the fire department is doing with their truck fund, where you know we put ninety thousand dollars a year into that uh, reserve fund, and. Um, so the plan is is to try to raise um, and have money available to replace the grader, and we would probably buy a used grader. Um, there are plenty of them available, um, but uh, you know. Th so the plan right at the moment is to replace one of the plow trucks. Um, we have enough money in the reserve fund to buy it outright. So again, we, we wouldn't be paying interest. And we would probably very quickly be able to replace the second plow truck within, let's say, two About years. Two and a half years, yeah. three years. Um, and then the grader is next on the list. And whether it lasts that long, um, that's an unknown. Um, but uh, uh, so far, the you know some of our other town residents who are knowledgeable about equipment kind of urge us to just keep that thing going um, as long as we can. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the greater the town gets uh, is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Most towns would have a greater three sizes smaller than that one. Actually, most towns nearby have graders that are much more bigger. At least, at least looking at Hardwick and Callis, anyway. Those are larger. But, and, uh, and it is nearing 30 years old. And I think that you know some of the comments have been, it's been off the road for some extended periods of time because of the required maintenance. Sometimes at inopportune periods. I think that's part of the reason that this has been a conversation since I, I mean, I've been on the site for, for a year, but it's been a part of that conversation the entire time. Just when it breaks, it's hard to make things work. Right. Well, I guess what happened from some of those old times back in the day, that, that was considered just the ultimate. And the talented body graders like that. <laughs> right. The small ones. It, and they, they, they wouldn't last. They couldn't hold up. They didn't have the weight and the torque to, uh, to really hold them. To really hold the road. Right, right down. Yeah. That's the hard thing. The, the residents in town who have knowledge of the highway equipment 
feel that the grader that we have is adequate. Um, it is uh, an elder grader, um, but um, with a replacement here and there, like a hip or a knee or whatever, it's, it's still still moving, still functioning. But. And the operators like the newer ones because of the, the articulation and the visibility and the hydraulic controls and, and features that are more comfortable. <laughs> sure. The, the used grader that we were looking at a, a couple, three years ago, um, would have cost about $250,000. So, and that's the trucks that we'll, we'll be replacing are you know, approximately that, maybe a little bit more at this point. Um, so um, um, trying to do some quick math in my head. But it, so it, it would probably be four or five years, maybe six, um, where we might be able to buy a, a used grader outright. Um, that's that's kind of what the select board has been trying to do is to put this money away um, and uh, and have so that we're able to buy um, a piece of equipment outright. Um, Hardwick's able to do that now, and um, it, and as Chance mentioned, it saved uh, quite a bit on interest um, for it. Um, so. I know Hardwick, when they did it, they did ask the town to approve a, a significant expenditure for one year to just get a chunk of money in that reserve fund. Um, but uh, oh, the select board in the past, is, you know, that's not something that Woodbury can do. We can't ask the town for a big chunk of money to, to start this off. So we're, we're just putting money in the bank um, at the moment. In a lot of towns, they, they have their grader on a 10 year uh, replacement. Right. Mm -hmm. About $1,000, $1,200 a year, mm -hmm. some $1,500 a year. Yeah. And so they have a lot of work. It's, it's time. Yes, Cindy. Can I, can I ask a question um, about an article 9? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't see any reason why not. Okay. <laughs> the amount that I'm seeing on the 215, 780. I can't find that number. Is it on page 23? Okay, yeah. But um, where is that number? I can't find it. Let's see. I would expect it to be on page 23. Yeah. Which, which number? The uh, the, the, the general budget. The general fund budget. Yeah. The two hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Um, Eight twenty. That's twenty three. It's uh, total expenditures. Yeah, that's what I thought, but the numbers are a little bit different. So I was wondering if it was just a typo. Um, yeah. So you rounded it. It rounded it. Yeah, I think they just rounded. They rounded it up. To it's, 780. It's, it's, so uh, there's a 24 cent. 32 cents. 32 cents difference. difference. I did my math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of, um, instead well, of it's more than that, you're right. Um, the 780, I, I think it's probably just, uh, you know, it's $10 off basically, or $20 off. I just want to make sure I was looking at the same number. Yeah, it's total expenditures. Yeah would be the, that's what we need to raise. Right. So, yeah, it's, um, there's a, they don't match up, um, but $20 out of that is, so I have a feeling it was just a, a, a small mistake. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Let's check out the highway budget too to make sure. Yeah, it's, it's correct. It's correct. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that was just a probably a human error. Okay. I just comment. I think the roads are really well maintained these days. I agree. I agree. Yep. And so the cold. Yeah, all of it. That's the hard part. We over the last few years, almost all of the culverts have been replaced. Um, 
and uh, you know, going from the old metal culverts. And of course, when we replace them now, you go bigger. With the municipal roads general permit, um, post uh, Irene, um, the culverts have to be larger, There's, um, and that's a state requirement. Um, but we have replaced a lot of culverts in town, um, and we still have more to replace. Um, so, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I would agree. You know, I often on my trips um, out of town, headed south, I'll, I like to go up Foster Hill Road over to County Road. And as soon as I hit the Woodbury uh, Callis Town line, especially in the winter, you know, going up. Um, into Callis on Foster Hill. Um, the road's nicely sanded in Woodbury, and then when I get to Callis, you know, there's a few stones in the road, and, and I slow right down, because they're, you know, the roads are definitely um, not as well uh, sanded anyway. And Callis does a good job maintaining the roads, too. But, they have a lot more mileage on them. Than they yeah, they have a lot <laughs> more miles to deal with, right? But yeah, I th you know, I think, um, with Chuck as our road commissioner and, and the, the road crew that we have now, um, you know, they're, mm -hmm. um, they're doing a great job, I think. Yeah. So there's two other culverts. Is the, you're going to have a cast culvert put down here below the school? Uh, is that, yes. Um, yes. And then the other is the highway culvert coming across the highway right in front of the post office. That was my understanding of that. Um, the Route 14 culvert in the village is that um, VTRANS has a FEMA grant uh, pending to replace that. I don't know anything much about where, where its status is, but I do know that we, we were told that that's what they were doing to um, to replace that culvert. So I have no idea when that might happen. Um, we do have, we did get a grant um, for the design work for a cement box culvert um, between the church and the, the new old store. Mm -hmm. Two other culverts further towards Hardwick that are also metal culverts on Bailey Bridge Road and on Church Street. They're also uh, deteriorating, um, not as badly as the one right um, on uh, uh, Valley Lake Road. Mm -hmm. But that's something that um, the town will need to be doing in the near future. Um, you know, obviously applying for a grant for the design work, and then um, once the design work is done, the town will again apply for a grant to um, for the implementation of, of putting that box culvert in. Um, that's, that's how we replaced a, another culvert um, on the Nelson Pond Road. Um, a few, I think to my first was on the select board that, that happened. Um, so if they did replace the, if and when they replace the culverts on the highway, is there going to be a bypass to uh, to uh, to redirect traffic while that's going on? The box culvert? No, the the ones on on a 14. I, I, you'd have to ask me to answer. But yeah, I mean there would have to be just like there was a bypass when the box culvert got put in at the bottom of the catalog. Mm -hmm. uh, so it probably. Um, the old quarry road will become the bypass. Mm -hmm. and that's why we haggled and so much with the property owner when we wanted to have that um, the access to the cattle road from the old quarry road be town property mm -hmm. um, after the owner to lap it off. You know, just anticipating that if there was some type of flooding event in the village where either of those roads were Route 14 or the cattle road were compromised, we would need an alternative way for people who live up on the cattle road to get to get home. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we went through quite a bit of work and expense to, to buy that hundred feet of road from uh, so mm -hmm. yeah. well, they can also do, you know, half at a time like they did in, in Calis last right. summer where they keep the road open but they have yep. traffic control. And V Grand, yeah they might do that. Just yeah. come back. I don't know how they want to do that. That's a health officer has been a real, it's a real problem, I think, in town, in a lot of towns, and it looks like the state might get involved and, and solve it. Uh, there's, uh, I think, 
Senate Bill 201 mm -hmm. right now that would take the health officers' uh, duties mm -hmm. and uh, give them to the fire inspectors in the state. Mm -hmm. They're there in a lot of cases anyway. And then it gets, uh, they have the enforcement mechanism more ready than, uh, than, than the town. Than the what a town seems to be able to afford. Any other business or anything while we're, our numbers are dwindling fast? Um, anything else anybody would like to bring up or share? Anybody uh, attending remotely have any comments or anything that they'd like to share? Okay, hearing none. Have a great afternoon. Yeah. <laughs>